I'm gonna take aim at Bitcoin Cash today, but not quite the way you might imagine. I won't be discussing the philosophical arguments behind it. Assume for now, I don't care which version of Bitcoin is better, which one's the real Bitcoin. Let's just look at it on a purely technical aspect for the moment. Disclaimer, I learned about Bitcoin three months ago. Just like Andreas Antonopoulos, once I first learned about it, I didn't sleep, I didn't eat for the desire to learn more, but that does not make me a expert in the field whatsoever. I don't claim to be. I know I have a big platform, but hey, that came really fast. But let's dive into this. Let me start by saying there is manipulation going on. Whether you agree with it or not is besides the point there is manipulation happening to further someone's political agenda. So to begin with, let me tell you about ASIC Boost that Greg Maxwell, an early core contributor to Bitcoin, describes as a flaw or a weakness in Bitcoin's proof of work system that if exploited could give miners up to a 30% efficiency advantage over others. This could, Maxwell estimates, lead to a hundred million dollar a year advantage to any mining cartel that controls 50% of the hash rate. This could have a phenomenal centralizing effect by pushing mining out of profitability for other participants and the income from secretly using this optimization could be abused. What is he talking about? This is where Segwit comes in, or in this case, doesn't for a very long time. Here's the thing, Segwit removes the ability for ASIC boost to work. That's pretty serious for them. This website that shows the growing popularity of Segwit transactions spells the death knell for this advantage. You see the blue line down here. That's very threatening to some big miners. So which big miners? Here's a hash rate distribution for the Bitcoin network. The biggest being Amppool. Amppool is another Chinese-based mining operation owned by the ASIC manufacturer, Bitmain. This ASIC technology they've patented and is a staple of their products. There is some speculation that Amppool actually runs subsidiary pools in order to mask their actual hash rate. It's been theorized that they also include via BTC and BTC.com and possibly others. They as well had to be the mystery miner that was supporting Bitcoin Cash even when it wasn't profitable to mine that network. I've talked a lot about this, about Roger Ver, Yihan Wu. Maybe what they're doing is just to show us how strong Bitcoin can be when it's under attack from these people. Let's fork the network multiple times and offer no replay protection. And if it still survives, then it's great. But here's what really blows my mind. According to Maxwell's posts, any covert use of ASIC boost is very incompatible with almost any of the Bitcoin scaling solutions that were proposed, except of course, bigger block sizes. It's weird, right? How they tend to support Bitcoin Cash now, but wouldn't making Bitcoin look bad be a great sales pitch for Bitcoin Cash? I'm aware that Roger said the hard fork caught him by surprise, but he sure had support for Bitcoin Cash on his website pretty quick. I'm aware Roger Ver said that the hard fork caught him by surprise, but he still had support for the new fork on his website pretty quick. And the best part about it, no segwit. Is it a little bit of wonder that guys like Roger and Yihan Wu, the co-founder of Bitmain, who run very large mining pools in, that, in there in China, they both live in China. Is it a bit of wonder that they support Bitcoin Cash? But I will admit, I don't know them personally. Maybe they truly do think Bitcoin Cash is more aligned to Satoshi's vision. It's great, philosophical reasons only. So the views I'm gonna get on this video or get on any video, for me, means the absolute world. But in the grand scheme of things, for Bitcoin users is but a drop in the ocean. Use Bitcoin Cash if you like it. Absolutely, I'm not telling you not to. For me personally, if I need something sending quickly and low fee, I'm gonna use Litecoin, at least until layer two solutions are enacted on Bitcoin. If you'd like to read more about this whole ASIC boost manufacturer blocking benefit, yada yada, I will leave this page linked below. I actually had two versions of that script. One was really aggressive. I toned it down a lot. Bitcoin floating, 
between 3900 and a high 3900, what I feel is happening right now is that there's this glass ceiling. It keeps bumping its head against it because there's this cell wall. People see a round number like 4000. That's high. Let me sell there. A lot of people have the same idea. And then you get this bumping of its head. Essentially, it's not really good to keep bumping your head for a while because that means you might come down quite a bit. But if you can break through, great. Here's an example of a breakthrough. Sumo coin. I made a video about it down there. Boy, I wish I bought. <laughs> it might sound funny. I didn't actually know that it would be so popular. Although I, I'm not taking credit for all of this. I'm sure there were some other posts, maybe some well-timed videos. I'm not sure. But I bought in at about here once I realized how popular it was going to be and, and, and read some more and, and liked it. But what I noticed was that there was no cell walls at all. Like there was no volumes going anywhere. So if you wanted to buy a lot, you're going to buy way up the chain very quickly. So this kind of growth up here, while unsustainable in the long term, you will see that come down after a, a huge spike, hopefully gradually up, but we'll see. This kind of thing is what happens when you've got no cell walls. I'm just sat here looking at this coin and I'm, and I'm seeing this quite great growth. And I'm wondering, like I don't do technical analysis on the web uh, on on this channel. Sorry, I don't think that I don't. I just don't believe in it. I'm not saying that there there aren't some scenarios where you know it works, but I just can't see someone predicting this type of stuff using technical analysis. I think news is far more powerful. I think what people are saying is far more powerful than technical analysis. But how can you predict movements like this? It just gradually just goes up for out of nowhere. Walton being a steady grower for a while, I tried to order my 10X card today and they're out of stock, which sucks. Neo is currently pretty stable at around $25, $26. Just waiting for that new pairing of a Korean market. I know people are just hoping for a Neo slash KNW pair, the South Korean one. I hope people won't dis be disappointed. I don't know how much that they're really gonna like it. Maybe they will, but maybe they won't. I wanna address something. Is paying for stuff in Bitcoin a bad idea? Well, no, duh. Wait, 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 hold on. If Bitcoin hits 1 million USD per one, which maybe it will one day, maybe not in our lifetimes, but maybe our children's, maybe their children's. But essentially, let's just say it did. If you bought a coffee today, in the long run, that coffee, if you use Bitcoin, might have cost you $10,000. So you have some alternatives. Replace that which you bought. You know, if you bought 0.1 Bitcoin something, replace that 0.1 Bitcoin or use Visa. The argument being that paying for stuff in Bitcoin is the best scenario because it helps with mass adoption. You show them that there's a market for it. Maybe more businesses will start to use it, but it's not as clear as that. If you were to pay online for something, you might very well be waiting a while when it's just faster to use Visa. As well as that is buyer protection, which I'm sure you're all aware pretty much sucks with cryptocurrencies. Essentially, if you have a dispute and you paid with Bitcoin, you have to trust that they're going to do the right thing and return the funds to you, but it's up to them. I'm sure there are some instances where it's not, but generally it's much more safer to use Visa. So should they offer you a discount for it? Yeah, this background's from Norway. Yes and no. So the issue is that while they don't have to pay Visa their cut, because they do take a cut for every transaction, they also have to deal with the fact that Bitcoin transactions are maybe some startup costs in getting the infrastructure for it, as well as that it complicates the tax situation, having to declare Bitcoin. If they declare it at all, I guess, not a lot of Americans do. This was published in around March or for March tax year. 807 people declared Bitcoin for tax purposes to the IRS out of millions of Coinbase users. I thought this was a pretty cool video showing someone promoting the cause at a wedding. electronic Bitcoin transfer isn't it beautiful? The holy union of two people coming together and sending Bitcoin. We have a screenshot, an old one, but a screenshot from the Silk Road. You wanted to buy some mushrooms? 
29 Bitcoin, please. 3.5 grams, 43 Bitcoin. But at today's valuation is $172,000. The most effective drug rehab program to ever exist. The European Central Bank has issued a very interesting piece of news. Mario Draghi, who is, uh, I guess, some sort of bigwig, has declared that the Central Bank of Europe has no power to regulate Bitcoin. This might sound great, depending on your viewpoints, but in actuality, it doesn't really change anything. He states it would not actually be in our powers to prohibit and regulate Bitcoin. It wouldn't be their affair. And then goes on to say that cryptocurrencies are purely a speculative asset and compared them to tulip mania. I made a video talking about the tulip mania versus Bitcoin thing before. There's good evidence to show that this whole Dutch phenomenon never even occurred. But assuming that it did, we are really comparing apples to oranges, swings to roundabouts, or online math to flowers. The, ma the major taking away point is the fact that Bitcoin's a scarce resource and a flower is not. So the Central Bank of Europe does not have the authority. However, the European Union does. I'd be much more excited about this statement if it was coming from them. Oh, so I filmed this episode in 60 frames per second. I think you guys are gonna like it, let me know. If you'd like to see me shoot in higher quality as well, I know it depends on some of your internet connections, I can do 1440p. If you'd like to see that, let me know. Oh yeah, and I shot some footage in New York, although I'm not actually there, but I aim to be hopefully sometime next month. I'll keep you posted. I aim to do some interviews with a few people while I'm out there. I think you guys are gonna like it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.